What's up people, this is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. Alright people, for this video, this is a very special video for me. This is a two-parter. This is part one. I wanted to have my twin daughters come on and do their testimony of how they left religion. Okay, so... This is my twin, my daughter. She's a twin, and her name is Chelsea Jones. So she's going to give her story, her perspective, and uh, I want y'all to enjoy it. And in fact, she actually left religion before I did. So it was, it was an interesting time. I don't know if you remember that or not, but... Yeah, I kind of remember. It was a yeah. crazy time in our family when we were leaving religion. It was a crazy, crazy time. Yeah, definitely. So... This video is not about me. This video is about her. So I want all of y'all to sit back and enjoy her story. Okay. Just tell me your name. What's your name? Okay, so I'm Chelsea. I am the second, well, I'm really the third in line out of all five of us. And yeah, we, we just grew up. Um, the earliest that I remember being in church was just a vague memory. And it was really just getting dressed for Sunday, wearing the cute dresses and, you know, just going to church and even Bible study on Wednesdays, we would go after school, we were super tired, I remember always being tired. Um, and then after that, that's just a vague memory of when we lived in Virginia. So fast forward, when, I'm, when I was eight years old, we moved to Georgia and we started going to Creflo Dollars Church and, um, I remember getting saved one Sunday and then the next Sunday getting saved and the next Sunday getting saved and um, but we really did like the church because of course they had incentives and who wouldn't lo love that but I would say that that was my first time really developing that fear it was really a fear of thinking I was going to hell if I just did anything wrong and as we know, human nature is you're always going to do something wrong. You're always going to sin. It's just in our nature. We can't help it. Animals make mistakes and humans make mistakes. We're just on this earth to make mistakes. But that was the first time I was super afraid, feeling like, wow, like if I do this, I'm going to hell. So that's why every Sunday I would go back to church and get saved all over again. And it just felt... I, w I definitely say while I was a Christian, I felt like a robot in a sense I didn't feel like I had a sense of knowing who I was it was what I was supposed to do on this earth until I die and hopefully go to heaven so but I remember it was yeah I had to be nine or ten but um, that sense of fear it definitely affects you as a child and and I went on to my teenage life to feel that way as well um, not only that it was just all a blur like we was doing the same thing we were going to uh going door to door preaching about the gospel which was something that i questioned all the time i mean who wouldn't question it? i think everyone has questioned it but of course you know in this life you're always going to get vague answers or um ans answers that don't solve the answers and that's really how it was for for me um but yeah so we i didn't like going <laughs> i didn't like going door to door I didn't like going to Bible study. I didn't really like doing any of that stuff, but it wasn't because, I think it was because it's something that you're forced into and it becomes, but when it becomes a routine, you just know that's a routine. So when you grow up, you feel like going to Bible study is a routine, going to church is a routine, praying is a routine because it's something you've done your whole life. It's like brushing your teeth in the morning. And so that's really how it was. Um, and that's just how it was my whole life. And so I would say once I went to college, it was a sense of freedom because my parents were always the ones that made me go to Bible study. My parents were always the ones that made me go to church. So when I went to college, I felt like I didn't have to do that anymore. And so um, I always had questions like I might because I would read the Bible as I still was in college because it was just something that was embedded in me. My dad was super religious. My dad was he was strict too. He was very strict. <laughs> Uh, but yeah so when I went to college I felt a sense of freedom like I'm not going to church I'm not going to Bible study I'm not doing none of that but of course you know it's that manipulation that you've been through your whole life so you're like if I don't do this I'm going to hell and it's still that sense of fear that has been with me since I was nine years old or eight years old where I really remember being a Christian and so um what was I say so 
yeah it just it was just a sense of fear so of course i still would go to church on sundays with my friends they were super religious way more religious than me but i would still go with them um i would also go to bible study i remember one time in college i went to the chorus and i was singing the chorus uh, <laughs> but i didn't really believe in any of it but i would say um I went to this program in my school called Summer Beach Project and we basically every single day we had Bible study. We spoke about the Lord, we prayed, we meditated, we did, well not necessarily meditation, we just prayed. Um, and then we did journaling and then we had jobs and it was so fun and then you had that high because of course when you're there you're not doing nothing. It's college so they're not drinking um, in a, a college Christian camp so there is a dry summer you're being around people with the same mindset of you so of course it's manipulative because you're like when I go back home I'm gonna be sin free I'm gonna be this and this and you go back home and everyone is going back to their regular identities their regular lives and that's what really happened to me so um, I did end up getting pregnant when I was 20 years old and I gave birth at 21 and I remember my, my little sister moved into my apartment with me at the time and I remember um, one day we were just sitting on the bed and she was so confused about just Christianity. She just, she couldn't understand it. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I've always felt that way. Like anytime I asked someone, when I went to Summer Beach Project for the summer, I asked them, I'm like, wait, hold on. So God said, I'm like, wait, God said that we have free will. But then we have another scripture where he says, well, well he, we have another scripture where he says, that I know everything that's done before is basically I'm paraphrasing that I know I basically know everything that's done before it's even done or I know everything about you before it's even about you know whatever so I was so confused I'm like we, I'm explaining that to the pastor at the time and he didn't have a clear answer for me. he's like it's just the Bible you know it's whatever he says that's just what it is like letting so and I always would get the same answers over and over again whenever I ask those questions so I'm like I'm not getting any specific answers. If you ask me, you know, how many states there are, I'm, I'm going to know the answer because it's factual. But with, with, with Christianity, I feel like it's not that way. So, of course, everyone is going to have their specific answer. And that's basically what I went through. So, I was so confused. So, then I remember my sister called my dad. And <laughs> literally, this is the day that I became an atheist. My dad was she was just like i'm just so confused she was she was really tearful i don't know if you realized that but she was so tearful she didn't understand it and she's like i'm just so confused about the bible i don't know if it's real like this missed me he was like yeah i honestly i'm having some questions too but i can't talk about it right now i'll talk to you about it later so once he said that it was validation for everything that i needed it was every type of validation on I'm like okay I don't believe it in and I started looking it up I started researching because when you're when you're in Christianity which I understand you when you're in Christianity you have that mindset of I don't want to question it because again it's that fear when I was eight years old I'm going to hell if I question it you know what I mean so and and that's just how I felt so anytime I ever wanted to look into anything I felt like oh wow I'm going to hell. Let me not do that. Let me not question it. But I don't know. My dad, he was always into the Bible. He read the Bible. He always read it to us. He made us read the Bible and explain it to him and all those things. So I, I trusted him in that process. So when he basically said what he said, I believed him. And I'm like, this is not something I believe in. And I and I didn't express it to him at the moment because I wasn't sure where he really was truly at 100%. Um, but I did talk to my twin sister and she's like, what? This that's what it says? Like you read this and this is what it says and all of those things. So it just and I'm like, yeah, I'm free. Like and it was a sense of freedom. Like being atheist was a sense of freedom. And then finally my dad found out and then I don't know if maybe before he found out he was already atheist, but it was just like a sense of just freedom, like a weight lifted off my back. Like I don't have to live my life feeling like if I just make a simple mistake that I'm going to hell or all these things which I of course is not it's not based on sinning of course it's about salvation but that's how I felt in my mind because it was still unanswered questions for me so that's really what it was um, but so yeah ever since then my life has just been so different I, it was definitely a sense of like I was like wait I'm living like this is a life like I'm alive and those are the feelings that I felt like and I didn't feel that way towards Christianity because with Christianity everything is if I do any accomplishment I make I have to thank God for it or any type of uh, uh, you know 
the the whole saying's like I'm not you know it's not about me it's about him and um it's I can't remember it right now but a lot of it it just was more of like we're worshiping him and we are nothing and it made me feel that way it it messed with my confidence it messed with my sense of worth but once I got out of that I was able to study like TED talks about worth and about self love and all of those things and realizing that self worth is something you already have no one can take that from you. And that was something that helped me. I would say the con, though, would definitely be losing my friends because a lot of my friends were Christian. And, of course, like I said, I went to a summer camp. And that's where I met a lot of my friends. But um, I understand it. Like, even though it's hurtful, I understand it because I was once in that place where no one could change my mind. I don't care what anybody said. I was always going to be a Christian. So... I, I definitely understand it, but I feel like I'm just at a different place in my life where there's no going back. It's just, there's no going back. There's there's nothing that convinced me again. I've had friends who've been atheists and went back to Christianity and I asked why, and they still don't know the answer. It's just cause, like, and just cause is just not, that's not validation for me. That's just not factual for me. I need to hear something else. So a lot of the times they come back, it's either an emotional feeling it's never facts, it's an emotion that they feel that makes them go back. But nothing that I see that, okay, if that happened to you, then it needs to happen to them as well. And it's not. Because they're all doing the same thing you're doing. They're all praying, all of that. So I wasn't getting that feeling. And so that's why I knew like what I did was right. And I made the best decision for myself. I don't know where my life would have been or even the shame that I would have felt if I was still a Christian. Because a lot of the emotions that I felt were not... I'm not saying that I never felt a positive emotion, but a lot of the emotions I felt towards being a Christian was negative. And so I'm just super grateful that I was able to just find myself like learning new things of what I like, like to draw. I like to do all these things, you know, I like to read. I like to read other books, fiction books, and not feel like, oh, if it mentions witches, I'm going to hell, like, or uh, it's wrong, it's a sin. So um, I learned how to meditate and a lot of times with meditation, Christianity, they feel like clearing your mind or whatever is evil or the origin of meditation. But I think when you clear your mind, you're able to think. And not only are you able to think, you're able to think logically. And a lot of people don't realize that. So, and I, I mean, a lot of people with Christianity, it makes you realize like, wait, if they're thinking logically, they're not going to believe in us. So we got to say it's evil. That's how I feel personally. That's just an opinion. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's a lot of things that I would have never thought yoga. I, I would have never thought about doing yoga while, um, you know, leaving religion. So it's just, I, I hope that, I, and my thing is, I never try to get any of anyone that, anyone in my circle, I never try to convince them to leave religion. I just believe that religion, it, it needs to come with sincerity and authenticity. Like, it needs to be where you want to do that, and that is what's important to you right now, and that is what grounds you. But it shouldn't come from a place of fear, it shouldn't come from a place of shame, um, and it shouldn't come from a place where a person feels like they can't even be themselves. And I feel like that's what Christianity is. Um, sometimes I feel like it could be a click as well. The Bible says to not judge, but a lot of, a lot of people judge. A lot of people... Leave me leaving religion it was judgment it was my judgment day and I did lose my friends and and that's what it was that was that's what it was and but I was willing to sacrifice all of that for my happiness and for my peace um and just a sense of like it's just amazing it's so it's crazy because I can't really think of the words to explain how I feel now and even how I felt then but of course I'm not saying that you won't ever have it's something you were born with. I was born being a Christian. So I'm I'm always going to have those moments where I'm going to slip up and I'm like, hold on, wait, you know, maybe I do need to pray. Like <laughs> if someone's super sick or maybe I need to do this, maybe I do need to revert back to it. And because it, 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 at the moment when you were a Christian, when I was a Christian, it grounded me and everyone needs something to ground them. It could be your child, your children that ground you. It could be earth that grounds you. But a lot of people, especially in America, it's it's religion that grounds them. So without it, they don't know their laws. But for me, I had to find a new purpose. And I think that's super important with Christianity. Like just just find your purpose and 
and, and realize that you don't have to reach any goal. You just have to be. You just have to live. That's it. Christianity makes it seem like it's a mission. You have to preach to all these people. You have to... What is it? You have... Uh, like, you you know what I mean? Uh, live a life of forgiveness and, and not, not sin and all of those things. But here, like, being atheists, of course, we're moral. I mean, majority of us. But we we don't have to we don't have to we, we we basically there's nothing for us we can just live and and I love that like now I'm like what what goal do I really want to accomplish instead of saying like oh my gosh how many people do I have to preach to how many people do I have to get saved how many people do I have to trap into this religion and so that's just how I feel but and so yeah <laughs> it's funny but and then also another thing I would definitely say is. A lot of people aren't gonna it's gonna feel a little ostracized you're gonna feel a little ostracized because Christianity is America's religion and so it's something they always they they've always believed in it's something that's ingrained in us and God we trust uh, Republicans that's that's you, you know what I mean like that's the uh, God is the is the centerfold and it's everywhere it's literally everywhere Easter Christmas all of that so of course People aren't gonna understand your journey, and that's okay. It's not meant for them. Like if you listen, if you listen to other old people, they say, "Live your life for you." And I just feel like that's what being an atheist to me is living my life for myself. And I'm proud of that. And I'm, it's not, it's not easy. I'm not saying that everything will come to you once you leave religion, but it's just more, it's more free, and it's more like you can do your journey yourself. And you don't, it doesn't have to be an explanation for everything. Instead of saying, hey, I prayed for my parent to survive, God's supposed to supply that for me. Now, it's like if they pass away, you understand. It's just life. Everyone, no one is, no one is safe from anything. And so that's just how I feel about, um, that's how I feel about me leaving religion. Being a daughter of a Christian rapper, I feel like as a child, you're going to love whatever your parents love. And at the time, my dad loved Christian rap. So, of course, we knew his raps. We sung his raps. We understood it. Like, we loved it. We listened to it all the time. We would get him to make uh, burn, burn CDs for us to listen to it. Um, so, it was just... It was different and even when my dad was doing that we wasn't like he wasn't allowing us to listen to the actual secular music like we wasn't listening to rap music or we weren't listening to R&B music so it was just it was it was different but we loved it and yeah we were sang it for the churches and which was more of an ego thing but uh yeah so we just we just loved our dad being a rapper and then our brother he became he got into the music thing as well so it was it was cool like my dad being a rapper was cool of course he was religious so we knew that everything that he rapped was going to be a, a religious thing um but we knew it wasn't never going to be no cussing or nothing, but we knew all of his songs. We knew every single one of his songs. If we was dancing on Saturdays, it was my dad's music and yeah, it was, it was a lot. But my dad, he was also, he was just strict. Like he was so religious that he made me religious. It affected me my whole life. Like I was so religious to other people and in a way I was judgmental as well. Like. It was people I love and people that are still my friends to this day. Like they saw, they was like, you did a whole 180 because I was super judgmental. But of course, when you're in a place of being very religious, which if people who are truly Christians, they would be very religious and you would abide by those things. And that's what we did as a family. And so it just made me judgmental as much as people don't want to admit it. I am going to admit it. I was very judgmental. And so and so yeah so everything he did we basically did and he but not only would he teach us that he would show us the scriptures in the bible or show us from another book so that's why it was so easy to believe him because it was he was showing us this is what's written and this is the bible is something that we automatically believed and that's just yeah that's basically how it was so uh, how about when y'all recorded uh fruits of the spirit oh fruits of the spirit oh lord <laughs> Recorder fruits of the spirit. Explain that one, fruits of the spirit. Yeah, so the fruits of the spirit. Um, he had a song which is basically uh in the Bible. 
And he said the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, um, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. What? Against such there is no law. Is love, joy, So we love, listen, we love that song. We love that song so much. <laughs> like we would say that song all the time. And um, so not only did he check, turn it into the fruits of the spirit, there was other lyrics as well. So like, uh, whatsoever it is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the spirit that overcometh the world, even our faith. So it was just different scriptures or hearing is our love made perfect. Uh, that, we have, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world so he will make us remember the scriptures or this, yeah to your, your faith, faith virtue into virtue, virtue knowledge into knowledge, knowledge temperance yes. into temperance patience into patience godliness into yes. godliness yes. brotherly kindly kind kindness and then some brotherly kindness, yes. kindness yes. charity So we just, it was so many scriptures. Like my dad, he always made sure he made a way for us to memorize the scriptures. We was listening to Christian songs. We was listening to like learning uh, scriptures, Bibles, every single thing. It, we was wow, deep wow, in. And little we little was deep into it. Yeah, we were we were deep into it. So. And y'all performed it. Yeah, we performed it at one of our cousin's church, and they loved it. So we then we started performing it every. Sunday, like every other Sunday when we were there, or even if we, when we moved to Georgia, when we went back to Virginia, we would perform it again. So yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot, but it was, <laughs> I mean, of course in that moment you would love it. But then after, once you think about it, you're like, dang, like this was manipulation, like to the highest and, and that's what it was. So, but there's no regret for me, honestly. I think there was a reason for I mean, it doesn't have to be a reason, but I think that in that moment, it was what it was, you know, and I don't know, I don't know where I would be if I wasn't a Christian in that moment. So I try not to regret anything, but now I'm not. And I'm so happy about that. And I think that people have to do it on their own time. I don't think it needs to be where you have to be manipulated into being an atheist because it's not genuine or authentic. And just like I said, with Christianity, you can't make people join because they're born with it or because you feel like this is what they should be. It needs to be authenticity in there. It needs to be something where they feel like this is what I love and this is what I want to do. But it, it shouldn't be under any false pretenses. And I think that's what it is right now. And it's, it is a way of manipulation. And so, yeah, and that, that's what it is. So. Okay, so yeah, so when uh, when my dad has aortic dissection, I remember when he first, before he even got to the hospital, I, I was going, I was coming down the stairs, and my dad was laying, he was holding his chest, and I'm like, he always play around, so I'm like, oh my gosh, he always playing around, and then my brother, and my, my youngest brother, my youngest sister was like, no, this is serious, like, and they was praying, I'm like, wait, what is going on, and then he said, car 911, so... I called 911 and I'm like, I think my dad's having a heart attack because of course he was grabbing his chest so I really didn't know what was going on. And um, and so I called his mother, which is my grandmother. I called her and I'm like, Grandma, I think he's having a heart attack. Like, I don't know what's going on. And she's, she, you know, she's calm as can be, let, asking me what's going on. And she called him and I guess he filled her in what was going on. And so he went to the hospital. At the time my mom was gone, and so, yeah, we were just praying and praying. It was so crazy. 
But the crazy thing about it is like when you're young, you feel invincible. You hear about people, but you hear about people dying, but it's never like, oh, my parents or oh, it's my sister, my brother, my my grandmother. Like you think everyone thinks they're invincible. There's a point where people go into re in depression because they feel like, dang, I never thought this would happen to me, and it did. And so that's kind of like what happened in the moment. So I'm like, even though my dad's going into the hospital for this, like he's good. Like I be, we pray all the time and we good. Like that's literally what it was. And so finally he told us what happened. He was in the hospital for a couple of days and then finally he's like, I have to have surgery. And my grandma's gonna come down. My mom, she was out of the country. So she, she flew down as well. So I'm like, oh snap, this is crazy. And I, I didn't know what was going on. So then finally, he had the surgery. My gr my grandma's in town. My mom's in town. He had the surgery. And they said he basically died for eight minutes. Is it eight or seven? They said seven. Se okay. But it was actually ten. Ten. Okay. So like seven to ten minutes. And so I'm like, oh, wait. Wow. Like, we're not invincible. Like, you mean to tell me, like, even if I pray, like, anything can happen and then and then that's when i started to hear like it's in his plan and it's it's like uh if you know what if it's supposed to happen it's supposed to happen so i'm confused i'm like wait hold on so you mean to tell me like if i'm reading the bible it says if you ask anything in my name it shall be given to you so i'm like wait this is supposed to happen and when we was at careful church we was always saying by his stripes we are healed by his stripes we are healed so i'm like wait that's not what happened in this moment like a surgeon just basically helped him and a nurse kept giving him CPR so that he could live so I was that was just a moment of question but of course you're religious and your father's still religious your whole family's still religious so you're like you know what this is something I need to suppress because again I still have that fear like I can go to hell let me stop thinking about this because why how dare I question God and so that's kind of like what it was but it was scary, like even seeing my dad in that moment. I've never seen nothing like that before. I never had any like major family members pass away that I actually knew. Like of course I knew my grandmother, but I didn't really see my great grandmother, but I didn't really see her um, on my dad's side. But so it was really interesting in that moment, I'm like wow. Like that let me realize like we can all die one day. Like we're gonna die. Like it was so crazy. It was crazy, but I definitely say religion definitely convinced me that we were invincible and if we pray we're gonna live a good life until we're ready to go but obviously facts and anatomy and physiology show me like that's not true and yeah so yeah when I was pregnant before I was pregnant with my son I was actually uh I went to Summer Beach Project, which I talked about before, and when I went to Summer Beach Project, I did so good the first year that the second year they said, hey, we want we want you to come in and we want you to be a team leader. It's a Christian camp. It's, yeah, and mind you, this is a Christian camp. And so they told me, like, we want you to be a team leader. And so I'm like, that's amazing. Like, my ego was at a thousand at that point. I was like, I get to lead a group of girls. Like, this is going to be so amazing. And so they told me this in... December, Jan December or January, and then in March, no, in April, I found out that I was pregnant with my son. And I just felt a lot of emotions. I'm like, this is crazy. I didn't believe in, I didn't believe in abortion or any of that because of course I was super religious. I'm like, that's not happening. But my friends were convincing me. I'm like, how dare you? Like, this, you know, this is God's child. Like, this is meant to be. There's a purpose for this yada 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 so i just felt but i also felt it was i mean of course anyone who read the pooh's family is super religious because my family was very religious so anyone in that situation would feel shame and that's the feeling that i felt it's a comfortable you even say now but it was a feeling of shame i felt shame i'm like wow i didn't i didn't wait till i was married to have sex now i have to tell my family i have to tell my parents I didn't know what to do and I even had to tell um, Summer Beach Project was the summer camp the Christian summer camp that I went to I said hey like I I'm pregnant and then you could tell they're like oh, okay whatever they're like okay and so finally two weeks later they had a meeting with me and they're like 
it was crazy. They were talking, they were like, were, were you thinking about adoption or uh, what were you thinking about? I'm like, what are you talking about? And, um, and then they finally did express to me, and I'm like, no, I'm going to keep the baby. So they did tell me that I couldn't be a team leader anymore. I could still go to Beach Project, but I couldn't be a team leader. And I was really hurt about that. I was so hurt because I was, I felt like I was a very devout Christian. Yes, I did sit on the side, but I was very devoted. And so I was just super upset about it. But um, I guess everything happens for a reason because that summer I did go to Beach Project still. But it was a, it was a moment where I, w I had to look more within myself. And that's really how it was. And I, I did feel judged. I, I felt judged by my roommate because she was very religious. So I'm like, oh, Lord, who knows what she's thinking right now. And 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 that's how it was. So you, you I'm like, maybe she doesn't want me to have a, a baby shower because I had a baby. Like, it was just so weird. It, it was it was it was a lot. It was a lot of emotions that I felt and none of them were, not a lot of them were good. And it was, should have been a beautiful pregnancy. It was more of like, I had to walk around with the A on my head, forehead at that point. Like I felt a lot of shame, but I guess I can say that I did experience a pregnancy out of religion and I had my daughter and it wasn't shame. I felt it was a different feeling. It was so, it was just full of love and realizing that I can make my own choices and I'm not saying that because I'm not religious I'm not uh, like sexually aware or whatever the word is I don't know we can say that on YouTube but um, it was more of like I love myself enough that I'm not gonna do these things anymore but it wasn't necessarily like Jesus told me not to do this so I'm not gonna do this so but having my daughter it was in it was a it was a place of love like I love my daughter I had a beautiful pregnancy there was not an ounce of shame not an ounce of shame it was none of that and and I was very grateful for that um of course I did have a feeling of how other people thought about me because I was around a lot of Christians like I was around a lot of Christians with my first child and I just was like whatever you guys say like whatever you know I even named him after a bible name like it was it was a lot into it but the second one she was just named out of love and what I was feeling at the time not necessarily because I was sucked into some religion what was she, named after? she was named she was actually named after my dad Willow so yeah that's my baby and both of my kids are my baby and I think I'm healing towards how I felt so I was happy to have my son there was no doubt about it in my mind um but I feel like if it was, if I, I wish I did have my pregnancy in a place of love, but that's also okay as well. I'm at peace with it and I love my son more than ever, so that's okay to me. Yeah, so we went to a church at the time where, um, yeah, we went to a church at the time where we were really close to the family that we were close to the pastor the first lady and then her son and then she also had two other kids two younger kids and i used to do the daughter's hair and you know i love the family to death like i absolutely love them um I, miss uh, the, the 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 first lady she was so sweet to me always when i would come over her house braid her daughter's hair she would cook for us she was just very loving if i needed to talk to her she was always there for me um, and then also with the son, we were super close to him. Like we were so close to him, but I think it's super important to know, like majority of the time with us, when you're a kid, you're just living, you're, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to listen to the music, the outside world listens to because you just want to fit in and Christianity, it just, it wasn't always what was in at the moment. And so that's really how it was. And so with Joe, he listens to the same type of like secular music that we listen to rap music we love the same artists like during the summer we listened to Wale the whole time he also was in the choir he was in the the choir with his dad's church so let me backtrack so his dad had started a church and we were the main members and then he had another family friend that was there and then a couple of other members and he would move around so at first we were in a hotel and then he finally got his building which was interesting, but we got, he got his building. There wasn't a lot of people there. It was just, we were the main family. And, um, I remember in that main building, he had a sermon and I was just, 
I was a little distraught, just a little bit. I was a little distraught. I was like, he talked about his cousin who committed suicide. And he's like, yeah, she hung herself and yada, yada, yada. He's like, and she's going to hell. And I'm like, oh, snap. I can't believe he said that. Like, that's his cousin. Like, there was no morality. There was no empathy, nothing. He just basically said she's going to hell because she committed suicide. She hung herself. Okay. Yeah, and also she was gay as well. And so, yeah, he's like, she's she's going to hell. She committed, she's committed suicide. She's gay. Like, this is my cousin. And I'm like, that's your cousin. You're using her as a sermon. Like, that was just not okay for me. But also just the fact that he said, like, she's going to hell because of this, because of who she is and also because she committed suicide. And so then... I was just talking to my dad about it. I'm like, dang, he didn't have to do all that. Like, that was so unnecessary. I couldn't believe he did that. Like, what if someone did that about his child? Like, it's just messed up or whatever. And, yeah, I just, I didn't really like his church because he was preaching the same thing. And I just wasn't getting any word out of it. So, I would actually go to another church at the time. And uh, uh, we were still hanging out with the, the son. Mind you, we were still going to his church. But we was always, always hanging out with the son on a on the side like we were uh during the summertime during spring break if we wanted to go out to eat just us and him we would always go out he was super oh. cool and so when we when we all went to college so we kind of did separate a little bit but my sister would always visit him all the time and maybe two or three years later he finally um we we got a call that said he committed suicide and um so yeah he did commit suicide and it was crazy because I'm like, wow, our pastor talked about his cousin going to hell because she committed suicide and she's gay, but your child just committed suicide. So would you say the same thing? And that really was very interesting to me, interesting to me because, I mean, I was an atheist at the time and I couldn't imagine being a Christian and hearing him say that, but he would never say that about his child. So that's why I know like there's a lot of contradictions. Like so, it doesn't apply. It, it applies to someone else, but when it's your child, it's, it's it would be hard for you to say, "Hey, my my son is going to hell because he committed suicide." Like you would never say that. And so it was just it was it just wasn't it wasn't okay. Like it it wasn't okay. But I always thought with Joe, I remember his last the last few times we did interact, and I remember um, my dad saying that. He interacted, he's like, because my dad would always post his atheist post on uh, on Facebook. And he did ask my dad, like, is this all real? And yada, yada, yada. And he's like, no, it's not. Like, these are the facts or whatever. And I remember, I don't know if his, his mom and dad share the same profile. So they did post, like, you know, about God, Christian stuff. And who knows how he felt in his last moment. It's like, who knows? Who knows what religion he was? Who knows? Who knows? And and it, but I just think it's so interesting the way the judgment can go. His dad saying that his cousin's going to hell, but now your son has done the same thing. And what is his destiny? And it's just interesting. Listen, life now is very free. <laughs> life now, I am. It's, it's weird because I'm not tied to any type of religion. It's just not going to happen for me anymore. And I remember my dad telling, because besides his videos, we just have normal conversations about something crazy we might have heard about religion or atheists or whatever these accusations they have about us. And so um, I remember we was I'm able to be myself and without shame. I'm able to no good and bad through a through a pace through a pace of being a human like I'm able to learn good or bad through a pace of being a human and in a good way like I know it's bad because this is what's gonna happen I know it's good because this is what's gonna happen like not that I know it's good or bad because I'm going to hell or heaven it's about because this is just the right thing to do is morality and so I don't think a lot of people get to do that yeah I think um yeah, I'm definitely in a good place. But like I said, it's never going to be easy. And But I also... Oh, this is what I was going to say. Me and my dad had this conversation. He he was speaking some truth about atheism and the facts when it comes to religion. I'm like, dang, dad. In my mind, I said, dang, dad is so good. He need to start a church. And I started cracking up. So I told my dad, I said, 
I was like, your word is so good, you need to start a church. And I said, but then I thought about it, we'd be starting another religion. And I'm like, dang, like, you know. And I realized I can never, I'm never going to join another religion. Like, I just know we were just supposed to be, we're supposed to live. Like, and that's okay. We don't have to have a purpose. We don't have to have uh, all these, like, uh, spiritual rules and all of these things because we don't follow them. There's no difference if when I'm walking down the street, I can't be like, oh, he's a Christian, she's a Christian, he's an atheist. We're never going to know. We live the same lives. We die from the same diseases. We die. It's not like all Christians live till 60. We have baby Christians that die, teenagers, little kids. So there's no difference. And I just hope that when people do, if people do decide to leave religion or if you decide to leave religion, I just hope that it's in a place of just feeling like you're done. You're done feeling like you're not enough, you're done being insecure, you're done being full of shame, you're done being in a place of fear your whole life. No one should live that way. And that's so, so I just hope that whenever you're ready, we are very welcoming. That's we are. We're welcoming. Really? And so yeah. Because in my world, there's not too many people I can talk to about how I feel, other than I can express them in the videos. But one one on one, this is the person I talk to the most about all of it, honestly. So there's no, there's not many people I can talk to about it because even in our world, you know, uh, her mother, she still, I want to say she might, maybe she might not go to church or whatever, but her, yeah. her, her thinking is still, I'm gonna believe in God, and there's no need to discuss that. And if you, that's what, that's what you want to do, do that. I'm cool with that. We just don't discuss that. So we don't really have, and y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, we come from, we have a super religious family. Very, very. Super religious yeah. family. Like I said, my great-grandfather was legend in our city, you know, so he turned over in his grave, he, heard, he saw these <laughs> videos, you know, so that's, that's just what we are. So I, I did want her to share her story, and uh, her sister is going to tell her story as well. So we're not finished with this. There's more to come. All right. And are uh, you had any more to say on this? No, no. I'm glad I was able to share my story today. All right. So everybody out there, and, and if you're, and, and if the only reason you have not left religion is because you're scared of hell, you're already out. You have already left religion. When you're just thinking about that hell thing, is it hell or the Holy Spirit, one or the other. They're all myths. So just go and come on out and live your life. You got one life to live. Go and live it. Just one. Live it. Oh, 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 one thing. Now, she's a Beyonce fan. Went to the Beyonce <laughs> concert. Didn't have to feel any. Hope. It was amazing. I didn't feel not a sense of shame. I didn't feel nothing was devilish. Like, and the devil, like, what's the concept of that? I would never understand that. So I, it was just a place of, like, wow, this is an artist with talent and she's a hard worker and it felt good i didn't see nothing demonic about it right and going again and I sure will <laughs> sure will <laughs> okay <laughs> beehive <laughs> so look at y'all I, I got another video coming for y'all and her sister that'll be coming soon and y'all continue to watch the videos we'll see you again yes peace